everyone. I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now it's been quite a while since I last visited my Five Weird and Wonderful Fish series, and I thought I'd spruce it up a little bit. As from now on, I think I'm going to base these videos on certain ecosystems in the world. So if you want me to go through some fish from a certain area, then leave your suggestions down in the comments below. But as you can guess from the title, in today's video I will be focusing on the Pacific kelp forests. Now kelp forest ecosystems, some of the most productive and dynamic ecosystems in the world. And it's easy to see why, as it's essentially the marine version of a rainforest. And the kelp offers protection from predators, as well as offering an abundance of food. But it isn't just fish that thrive in this ecosystem, as there's plenty of crustaceans, mollusks and mammals that call this ecosystem home. One of the most famous inhabitants being the sea otters. The sea otters hunt in these kelp forests, and they often use them as safe zones to keep away from predators. But this is a mutually beneficial relationship, as sea otters also eat sea urchins, which prey on the kelp themselves. But as well as the sea otters, there's also large populations of sea lions and seals that use the kelp forests, and one of the more surprising visitors are the grey whales, as even though their colossal size can make it hard to navigate in these environments, grey whales use the kelp forests to hide from orcas, and they also feed on the wide array of crustaceans that live there. But the kelp that creates these forests isn't actually a plant at all, as it's a type of giant brown algae, and this brown algae can grow extremely fast, as it's thought that they can grow around 24 inches or 61 centimetres a day. And not only does it provide an ideal habitat for many fish species, but us humans also use it in many products, such as ice cream, cereal, ranch dressing, yoghurt, toothpaste and lotion. But personally I think the most important use of the kelp is to produce a unique and biodiverse ecosystem for many different species to thrive. So in today's video I will be going through five weird and wonderful fish that live in the Pacific kelp forests. And first up we have the California sheephead. Now this species is probably one of the most iconic fish in the kelp forests, and is actually a species of giant wrasse. And the California sheephead is carnivorous, spending most of its day foraging around, looking for lobsters, crabs, mollusks and sea urchins. And to be able to feed on these hard shelled items, they have a pretty impressive set of jewels with some strong teeth. And by feeding on the sea urchins, they're doing the kelp forests a favour, because as I mentioned previously, the sea urchins feed on the kelp, and they can do so at an astonishing rate, as they normally feed on kelp in groups, and can get through around 30 feet or 9 meters per month. But feeding on this protein rich diet, the California sheephead can reach a maximum size of around 3 feet or 91 centimeters. But throughout their lifespan, they can differ in color and shape as this species shows some sexual dimorphism, even though these two images could be of the same fish, as California sheephead are hermaphrodites. As all sheepheads are born female, and eventually change to males when they are around 45 centimetres or 1.5 feet long. This transition also depends on environmental factors, such as food supply and the amount of females in the area. But this keystone predator is also quite vulnerable in the kelp forests, as this species has been overfished in previous years, and as most authorities have a size rule, meaning that you should keep the larger fish. This normally means that only the males are caught, and this completely upsets the male to female ratio and can negatively affect their populations. In 2001, the California Department of Fish and Game established regulations restricting how many sheephead you can catch, so hopefully this strange species can continue to protect the kelp forests. But our next species is the giant kelp fish. Now this species has a name very well suited to this list, and although it can reach a very respectable 61 centimeters or 24 inches, I wouldn't consider a giant, but it is quite a giant in its family, and this species spends most of its time around giant kelp, as they have extraordinary camouflage and can change their colour to match multiple species of kelp. And this camouflage not only protects it from predators, but also helps them to creep up on their prey, which in most cases is crustaceans, smaller fish and mollusks. And although they can change colour rapidly to blend in with their environment, they also go through a large colour change throughout their lifespan, as after hatching, the giant kelp fish is translucent, and to help them avoid predators, they sometimes school with mycid shrimp. But this species really does have to be a master of disguise, as one of their main predators are the very intelligent octopuses. So although this species really isn't a giant, it is probably the best camouflaged fish in the kelp forests. But our next species is one of the largest fish in the kelp forests, and it is the giant sea bass. Now I have featured this fish on the channel before, and some of you may remember that this species isn't actually a bass at all, as it's actually a type of wreck fish. And it has giant in its name for a reason, as it can reach a massive 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet long. 
but isn't just one of the largest fish in the kelp forests, but it's also one of the oldest, as even though giants are rarer nowadays, if you do see an 8.2 feet long giant sea bass, it could be around 75 to 80 years old. And as they're so large, they can choose to feed on almost anything, as they generally feed on crustaceans, as well as other fish, such as sheephead, whitefish and sand bass. And this species is also loved among divers, as they prove to be very curious and will often approach divers to investigate. But unfortunately today, this giant fish is critically endangered, as in the 1980s they were relatively common, but since then they have been criminally overfished, and as they are so curious, it was almost too easy for spear fishermen to take them out. But luckily today they are protected, so hopefully we'll see more giants in the future. But our next kelp forest species is the Garibaldi. Now some of you historians out there may notice that this fish has the same name as a certain Italian general, but this is no coincidence, as they were named after Giuseppe Garibaldi, as his followers often wore a characteristic scarlet or red shirt. But this species can also be quite aggressive and territorial, so I think it suits the name very well. But because of its feisty personality, its bright orange colour and its heart shaped tail, it's a much loved fish. So much so that it's actually the California state marine fish. But believe it or not, this species is even more pretty in its early stages, as although juveniles have a slightly duller red, they do have electric blue spots and stripes along their fins. But once it makes it to adulthood, it can reach a maximum size of around 38 centimetres or 15 inches. And in its kelp forest home, normally feeds on sponges, jellyfish, worms, nudibranchs and small shellfish. And when it comes to mating, the male Garibaldi is a very good dad, as once the female has laid her eggs, the male Garibaldi will scare her off and attack any intruders that come near the eggs, including divers. So this fish really lives up to its name and has to be one of the biggest characters in the kelp forest. But our last kelp fish is the leopard shark. Now this fish is a species of hound shark and has to be one of the most striking and pretty sharks out there. And unlike some other members of its family, this species is quite happy in groups. But they aren't exactly giants of the shark world, as they can reach a maximum size of around 2.13 meters or 7 feet long. But this smaller size paired with their agile body makes them perfectly suited for the kelp forests. And in their kelp forest home, they mainly feed on crabs, bony fish, worms and octopuses. And the leopard shark is mostly nocturnal, and in the daytime it can often be seen resting on the seabed. And although some sharks are known for travelling thousands of miles, leopard sharks are known as homebodies, as they often stay in a similar area throughout most of their lifetime. And as they prefer shallower habitats, it's not uncommon to see young leopard sharks in rock pools. And because of their love of shallow water, and the fact that they can breathe while stationary, they're often kept in aquariums. But in the wild they are the perfect predator to help maintain the health of the kelp forests. But that's about it for this video. As I said at the start, if you have any more locations that you want me to feature in this series then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.